When a monetary crisis hits, the responsible people who have saved their money get hit the hardest due to inflation. But if you're ready for it, you can actually make out quite well. Jim Rogers calls himself an adventure capitalist and is the author of the book, Gifts to My Children. I asked him, what can ordinary folks do to protect their money from reckless monetary policies? What you have to do is you have to find things that will protect your assets, real assets, silver, rice, natural gas, something that will hold its value in inflationary times. And, and how would one do that? Would one buy stocks in companies that sell it? Or in the case of silver or gold, which you didn't mention, but I'll throw in the mix, is it better actually to have the physical gold and store it and secure it? I do it two ways. I buy, I own gold and silver coins in my hand, in my house, in my, in my box. I also own gold and silver futures. That's another way to do it. Or rice futures. You can do it by buying futures. But if you know what you're doing, be careful. Always be careful. Is it possible to earn profits during a monetary uh, crisis? Yes, of course. That's one of the best times. I'm asking That's the guy the who's the king at that. So That's one of the best times. Share yes. some of your secrets with our viewers. Well, first of all, be sure you do your homework. For goodness sakes, do your homework. Just because you see somebody on TV saying, buy silver, don't do it until you know a lot about silver. But if you do your homework and you see that you think things are going to be good for silver, on days when silver goes down, you buy yourself some silver. Don't buy it when it's going up. You buy it when it's going down. Is there a reason you've twice mentioned silver and not gold, or did you just take it as an example? I own both. Uh, I have, silver is 40% below its all-time high. Wow. Gold is making all-time highs. Between the two, I, I, be sure you understand, I own both. Right. I think you'll make more in silver going forward. Be, because it's undervalued at the it's, moment. It's cheaper his, on a historic basis. All right. So I, I know this has been a, a problem since 1913, but your first answer to my first question was vote the bums out of office. How would we vote Ben Bernanke out of office? That is... <laughs> You're a Princeton graduate. It's your fault. Oh, <laughs> you know? he, uh, he, he was not teaching there when I was there, though. The attitude in the economics department was the same then as it was when, when he left. Well, it's clear he seems didn't... not to understand basic economics 101. He doesn't understand finance, economics, currencies. All he understands, Judge, is printing money. A man has spent his whole intellectual career studying the printing of money, and now we've given him the printing presses, and he is running those printing presses as fast as he can. When we say printing presses, this is a an allegory, uh, this is a, um, an example for how money is created. They don't actually use printing presses, they just digitally add yeah. zeros in, in people's in banks' accounts. Right. These days, well, that's one way. Or what he's doing at the moment is he's buying bonds, buying government bonds, but the money to buy the bonds he is digitally creating in a computer. Okay. Um, is there a new understanding in the, in the world, because you're an international adventure capitalist, of the dangers of central banking, the type of understanding which the general folks didn't have 10 or even five years ago? By general folks, I mean not professional investors and not professional economists. Forty years ago, nobody could have named a central banker anywhere in the world. Now we all know who Ben Bernanke is. We all know who central bankers are. Yes, they've gotten to be very powerful and very well known. But that's going to change. I, in my view, these guys are destroying themselves by do these horrible policies which the central banks are coming up with, printing money, taking on gigantic debts, which nobody voted for. They're going to destroy themselves. That's the good news. Let, let's take Ireland, uh, for example. Uh, the European Central Bank is about to bail it out. But is it? Isn't it really just bailing out Irish banks so that they have the cash with which to pay their debts, their it's, bad debts? It's, it's bailing out Irish banks and Irish stockholders and Irish bondholders. Those are the people who made the mistakes. They should be the ones taking the losses. Why should an innocent Irish taxpayer who's been around saving his money, right. not doing anything wrong, all of a sudden wake up one day and say, what? I have to bail out the banks, the bondholders of the banks and the shareholders. This is outrageous. So what is the, the theory under which the government operates? Why switch the burden from the Irish bankers who made bad investments and are losing money to the innocent working class whose savings will be depleted because they're going to be paying higher taxes Judge. to finance the bailout of the Irish bankers? Judge, the bankers call up and say, save me, save me, save me. And even if the politician says what, they say, if you don't, it's going to be the end of the world. It's going to be the end of the Irish economy. We're all going to collapse. They scare the politicians. The politicians don't know much about economics. Look at Obama. He doesn't know anything about economics. They scare these guys and so they do it. 
the uh, president reluctantly kicking and screaming and over the objection of the liberal wing of the Democratic Party uh, agreed to legislation which would extend the tax rates from the Bush era and in return got the federal government to subsidize unemployment insurance in the states for another 19 months. So you can now get unemployment insurance in any state in the union for three years courtesy of the federal government. Question, when you subsidize unemployment, don't you get more of it? Of course you do. I mean, if you, I mean now you can go on, on the dole for three years? I'm going on the dole. Why didn't somebody tell me, for goodness sake? I can't imagine what your unemployment rate would be, but we won't go there. But is, is this just a political gimmick to keep people dependent upon the government? Because no rational economist, I don't even think Ben Bernanke, thinks that this is a prudent investment, that this will move the ball forward, that, that this will enhance the lives of those who are receiving the money. This is to buy votes, Judge. You know that. This is to buy the votes. If you give somebody unemployment for three years, he's certainly going to vote for you. My goodness, you know that. Uh, Jefferson and Hamilton rarely agreed on anything. But uh, they both agreed that when the public treasury becomes a public trough and the public recognizes that, then they will only send to Washington those who will guarantee to return the biggest piece of the pie. Everybody understands that, Judge. You don't have to be as smart as Jefferson and Hamilton and Madison and all those old guys. Everybody understands that. Jim Rogers, adventure capitalist, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you. My pleasure.